Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I'm Sarah Al Fatih. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a written letter from the UAE President, His Highness Sheikh Mohammed bin Zayed Al Nahyan, inviting His Majesty to attend the 28th session of the Conference of the Parties COP28, which will be hosted by the UAE in Expo Dubai. The letter was delivered by the UAE Ambassador to the Kingdom, Sheikh Sultan bin Hamad bin Zayed Al Nahyan, at Safiya Palace. His Majesty expressed thanks and appreciation to the UAE President and praise the UAE hosting of the COP28, which will contribute to enhancing the climate work in the world. His Majesty praised the deep broadly bilateral ties and the bilateral cooperation in all fields, as well as the advanced coordination at all levels that aim to achieve the aspirations of both countries and their people. The Minister of Municipalities, Affairs and Agriculture, Engineer Wael Limbarak, signed a joint MOU in the field of agricultural development with the Minister of Climate Change and Environment in the UAE, Maryam al Mheri, during a video conference meeting. Minister al Mbarak indicated that the MOU aims to support a number of agricultural initiatives through the exchange of information and experiences regarding programs related to agriculture and afforestation and the exchanges of experiences in the fields of fish studies and fish farming and in the field of aquatic life and its cultivation. Two new articles were added to the previous MOU. The first article relates to enhancing cooperation between the two parties and contributing to support programs for developing the marine environment and enhancing fish stocks. Article 2 relates to strengthening the strategic food stocks of fish in both parties. Under the patronage of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, the This is Bahrain Society held the Ramadan Ghabga in the presence of the Minister of Social Development, Al Salma Sheikh Ahmed Al Asfur, and a number of diplomats and officials from various communities in the Kingdom of Bahrain. On this occasion, the Minister of Social Development affirmed that the Kingdom of Bahrain's continuation of strengthening bonds among various components of society reflects the Bahraini model of peaceful coexistence that has been praised by the international community in many forms. Minister Al-Asfur added that the Kingdom of Bahrain has set an example of tolerance and peaceful coexistence among all components of society through the ages. He also stressed the Kingdom's keenness to continue solidifying its position as a land of peace, love, brotherhood in a way that contributes to achieving the aspirations of the Comprehensive Development March led by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and the follow-up of His Royal Highness, the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. President of This is Bahrain Society, Betsy Matheson, highlighted the need for peoples today to better understand one another, which paves the way for acceptance of the other among cultures and religions, referring in the same context to the declaration of the Kingdom of Bahrain documents, which emphasized the vision of His Majesty the King that calls for the importance of combating ignorance in all its forms and the necessity of a perpetuating a culture of dialogue between religions. Bishop Aldo Barardi spoke about the importance of peace in feeding human needs and that peace is a firm demand as it allows for development and harmony, unites hearts and facilitates for a future for humanity to live in peace. The Minister of Youth Affairs, Rawan bint Najib Tawfiqi, affirmed the Ministry's keenness of setting initiatives that contribute to youth development who possess the skills of governance, innovation and challenge as it possess a major priority in the future vision of the Kingdom of Bahrain. Minister Tawfiqi noted that the Ministry has launched strategies and policies aimed at empowering youth and upgrading their capabilities, skills and projects, which ensures youth participation in shaping the future. This came during her patronage of the closing ceremony of the Tahaddi Masari program, which was launched by the Ministry in cooperation with Pearl Organization from the United Arab Emirates and with the support of Trax Company, Bahrain Branch, and aims to enable young people to enter the labor market and the entrepreneurship field. The Minister of Youth Affairs added that the Ministry is working to establish distinguished partnerships with various parties to work on advancing the capabilities of Bahraini youth based on the Ministry's belief that developing youth's skills is an integrated process in which the various concerned parties participate. 
The Future Doctors, Innovations and Prospects Conference organized by the Arabian Gulf University and patronized by the President of the Supreme Council of Health, Lieutenant General Dr. Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, came out with a set of recommendations aimed at developing medical education curricula which requires an analysis of the learning experience in medical schools as well as an external analysis of the curriculum which includes visiting distinguished international institutions in medical education. The recommendations of the conference aim to bring about radical changes in the curricula of medical schools that take into account the developments of the modern era and to graduate qualified doctors who are able to care for patients and develop appropriate therapeutic interventions for each of them. Temkin announced its support for the expansion of Awal Dairy Company's operations as part of the company's plan to develop productivity. Temkin aims to support in doubling the production of dairy products, which contributes to creating job opportunities in addition to increasing the volume of exports by 10%. Temkin said that Awal Dairy Company is distinguished for being one of the leading companies in the kingdom which works to meet the needs of the local markets, in addition to exporting local products to the region markets. Supporting local factories comes on Tim Keen's list of interests as part of the strategy to develop the industrial sector in line with national priorities and the economic recovery plan. The industrial sector is the second most contributing non-oil sector to the GDP with a rate of 14%. Sunni Endowments Council Chairman Dr. Sheikh Rashid Al Hajri announced the completion of maintenance work of Bez Al Barak Mosque in Hamid Town and Sheikh Salman Mosque in Rafah. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamid Al Khalifa ordered to revamp 30 mosques run by the Sunni and Jafri Endowments Directorate countrywide. Dr. Al Hajri hailed the care of His Majesty King Hamid bin Isa Al Khalifa for mosques, noting that His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister's order reflects content keenness. To constant keenness to revamp mosques. He commended the care and follow-up of the Minister of Justice, Islam Kepeza and Endowments, who set up a work team to revamp mosques and submit reports. The Ministry of Social Development announced the start of operating social centers during the evening period starting from the holy month of Ramadan. Among these centers is the Sharif Al Awadi Center for Children and Youth, which aims to hone skills and fill free time through a variety of programs such as sports activities, football, taekwondo, and religions programs, as well as organizing traditional and heritage related activities. The programs will focus on training courses in culture, art, crafts, and sports programs for children and young young people. As for adult programs, it varies between meetings among the people, evening se sessions and lectures in addition to teaching folk crafts and others. Since its establishment more than eight decades ago, the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry has contributed to supporting means of economic prosperity and commercial activity in the Kingdom of Bahrain. The Chamber has always, seeked to, has always sought to build bridges of cooperation with the private sector as a key partner in achieving the goals of sustainable development and strengthening the status of the Kingdom of Bahrain at various levels. The Chamber of Commerce and Industry works to ensure the sustainability of economic growth, support promising commercial sectors and attract investments and capital to the kingdom. The chamber also plays an important role in proposing more initiatives that contribute to increasing the pace of sustainable growth, diversifying sources of income, enhancing the investment environment, creating jobs and supporting national industries. And in order to achieve the kingdom's economic vision of 2030, the Bahrain Chamber is working side by side with the government to promote constructive cooperation between the public and private sectors in order to fulfill its vital role. Bahrain's ambassador to Syria, Wahid Mbarak Sayyar, announced that two Bahraini relief aid convoys have arrived in the Syrian territories to support those affected by the earthquake that struck the northern regions of Syria. The ambassador asserted that the move is based on the distinguished fraternal Bahraini-Syrian relations, noting that in line with the directives of His Majesty the King and the support of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister, the kingdom will continue standing by the Syrian people and confronting the ordeals that are going through. The ambassador 
indicated that the Royal Humanitarian Foundation will continue dispatching relief aid convoys to Syria to help it overcome the repercussions of the devastating quake. He indicated that a specialized Bahraini medical team from the Bahrain Medical Society had arrived in Syria where it visited the affected area's hospitals. The General Presidency for the Affairs of the Grand Mosque and the Prophet's Mosque is working on the necessary maintenance to periodically light the Grand Mosque using the latest modern technologies. The Grand Holy Mosque's chandeliers, lamps and lanterns are distinguished by their unique Islamic character made especially for the mosques in different shapes and sizes and add an aesthetic touch that illuminates the parts of the mosque, its squares, roof and minarets. There are more than 500 chandeliers of different shapes and sizes installed in the mosque, characterized by a decorative composition inspired by the Islamic style and painted with Quranic verses. Mosque, the mosque is also illuminated by more than 120 lighting units, which in their entirety embody the care enjoyed by the two holy mosques from the Saudi leadership. In addition, there are more than a thousand lighting units installed on the surrounding external columns and walls, which, are, which add ambience and elegance to the architecture. These decorative lights operate with an energy efficient LED lighting system to save energy with its unique design whilst remaining constant with the architectural character of the Grand Mosque. The King Salman Humanitarian Aid and Relief Center KS Relief launched the Ramadan Food Packages Distribution Project in Mauritania, South Africa and Tajikistan. This scheme will benefit thousands of families by distributing more than 134 tons of food in Mauritania, another 222 tons of South Africa and nearly 192 tons of food in Tajikistan. This scheme is operating in addition to the ongoing distribution of food aid packages around the world during Ramadan. In Nigeria, nearly 12 tons of food aid was distributed and in Indonesia, more than 3 tons. Dubai Roads and Transport Authority RTA, in collaboration with the Department of Islamic Affairs and Charitable Activities, has launched a campaign for the month of Ramadan to share tips on safe driving while fasting and additional traffic safety awareness to follow during the holy month. Through the Ramadan Safety Campaign, RTA has targeted three main categories of road users, pedestrians, motorists and new drivers. Those fasting during Ramadan can feel drowsy or tired, which can affect their ability to have a constant attention span or slower their flexes and rendering them incapable of driving safely. According to authorities, most traffic accidents occur during Ramadan because drivers fail to leave a safe distance between the vehicles in front of them. Drivers are also advised to avoid driving right after a heavy meal and to opt for public transport if they tend to be stressed while fasting. <laughs> 